Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, um, lady at the back who's wearing a red uh, top with, um, that's you, yeah, with the, the Mary Quant hairdo, but <laughs> you're not yeah. young enough, old enough to know Mary Quant. I was just wondering what your opinions on Scottish independence was. Of what? Scottish independence. Yeah, I mean, I'm not for Scottish independence, um, but obviously it's for the Scots to decide. Um, I mean, in a way, the other way of putting it is, I don't want England to become separate from Scotland, so I'm not for English independence either. Uh, I think we're stronger as the UK. And I think that you can get the best of both worlds with devolution and unity, if you like. Um, I'd like to see more devolution in England, more devolution to the cities of England. Um, something that you, your professor said that I'd um, argued for as a minister and I still passionately believe in. Uh, I think Scottish, Scottish devolution is good for Scotland and good for Britain. I think Scottish independence would be bad for Scotland and bad for Britain. Um, but obviously the Scots are going to have to decide. I think that it's quite striking that the Royal Bank of Scotland, the bailout of the Royal Bank of Scotland, costs four times the GDP of Scotland, the income of Scotland. And so the idea that you, I mean, that's a very potent example of why you're better off together. Pooling of sovereignty, which is essentially what happens in the United Kingdom, strengthens all of the United Kingdom. Um, I'm really interested in your project of the uh, movement for change to train people to become leadership. What's the possibility to expand internationally? Well, it's very interesting you should say that because one of the uh, things that we're going to do is get a partnership with a group called Life Makers in Egypt and do exchanges with them who are doing a similar community organizing. Well, look, I, I would say to all of you, go to my website, uh, or the website of the movement for change .org .uk and see, I mean, I'd love there to be across Wolverhampton uh, community leaders who, I mean, what you get, the training tells you, explains to you uh, the history of community organizing, which is an American thing, but also a British thing. It tells you how to map power in your community. Where does it exist, formal and informal power? It tells you about how to organize power in your community. And it tells you how to take action in your community to make that power felt. And I'd love it to develop in Wolverhampton in a serious way. Um, in this university, uh, the uh, Labour students, which is also on behind me somewhere, um, yeah, facebook.com slash Labour students, uh, Labour students have made it a priority campaign, the campaign, to uh, get the living wage paid to people who do the security and the cleaning work here. And so the living wage, that we have a min national minimum wage of six pounds and eight p an hour for over 21s, the, the living wage is the idea that you should pay for all the basics of life straight out of your wage without having to have tax credits on top, even though tax credits are better than nothing. Um, and Labour students are going to be engaging with the Vice-Chancellor and the rest of the university about that, how, how much would it cost, how could you have it, how would it spread to other public institutions across the city. Um, so I think there's real, there's real merit in that, and I hope you'll, I hope you'll get engaged. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, chap in the black um, T-shirt and glasses, about five down. Uh, yeah, you were just turning around, I think. No, just, just before. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that's no. it, yeah. Five minutes. Alluding to the importance of education um, in your conversation with Keith, I'm just wondering what message you'd send to Michael Gove, Education Minister. I alluded to the importance... I didn't quite get the sound, sorry. Of, of education. The importance and, of education. Yeah, and tackling the, the challenges of all... I mean, all I the think face. the message I would give to Michael Gove is that if you're Education Secretary, you're responsible for 23,000 schools, not just 100 schools. And he, his whole thing is, let's create 100 free schools that are new, innovative things. Some of my friends are setting up free schools, and potentially they're going to be great. But you've got to be concerned about the education system as a whole. I think that one thing that he's done that's good is that he's, he's focusing on the importance of teaching, high-quality teaching. I think that's really important. But his answer to that seems to be very structural, not about building... Um, it seems to think that structural reform is the way to get high-quality teaching, and I, I think that's simplistic. Um, so my message to him would be um, support the innovators within the system. Don't just think you have to bring innovators from outside the system. Chap on the right-hand side, about four rows down, wearing a sort of light-coloured top. 
Just put your hand up, just so we know. You. Yeah, that's the chap on me. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Miliband. Um, basically, my question is: um, What is your take on um, Islamophobia in Britain, and also uh, what measures could be taken in order to um, teach the religion of Islam? Because obviously, it's a peaceful religion, um, but in the Quran, obviously, things are misinterpreted and taken out of context. And also, don't you think that the uh, me media kind of demonises Islam? Um, and what, what is your take on that? Well, look, I think it's a really, really important question. In a way, it's an easy question for me to answer in a glib way and a hard question for me to answer in a really deep way. And the reason is um, I wouldn't suffer from Islamophobia and I, and I think there's a danger that one doesn't understand the, sometimes the, the subtext and the way in which people... It wouldn't be directed at me. So, so, so I've got to put that caveat in. Equally, though, I think one's got to be very, very careful about the so-called, quote-unquote, demonization of um, Islam. Because I think that the vast majority of British people, and to be fair, the vast majority of the British media, wants to understand more, engage more, try and sort of respect diversity. And the reason I say that, and I, I, I'd really ask you to think about this, and I'd be interested in your view about it. I mean, on the 7th of July, or the 6th of July 2005, Britain won the Olympics, one of the, or London won the Olympics. One of the reasons we won the Olympics was that we were a successful multicultural society. Didn't mean that every, everything was fine, didn't mean there wasn't racism, didn't mean that it was without problems, but it was a pretty big thing. 7th of July 2005, 7 7 bombings. You can argue whether they were committed in the name of Islam, but they were committed by four um, uh, British Muslims. Now, I thought what was remarkable about the 8th of July 2005 and the 9th and 10th of July, because I live in London part of the time, you know, people worried that there was going to be somehow Londoners turning against each other, and that didn't happen. I think that's a very, very positive note on which to end. I mean, if you wanted to say one... I just want to say one thing, which one is to say thank you very much do. for uh, very, very interesting, good questions. Some of you haven't had a chance to answer questions. One of the things I do is I put, uh, is I put on behind the screen my, um, uh, my text, uh, my, um, my Twitter account and uh, mental block there. If, if you want to, if, if you had a question and weren't able to uh, answer it um, and you um, send me a question I'll, on the train back, I'm going to Manchester actually, but so either on the train to Manchester or on the train home from London, I'll pick two or three questions and be able to answer those on Twitter. If you want to get the answers though, you'll have to follow me on uh, Twitter. So I hope some of you uh, are going to do this very sort of subterfuge way of getting more followers on uh, uh, Twitter, but anyway, you might actually enjoy following me on Twitter because it's a way not just of getting my opinions, but one of the things I do is broadcast out uh, some of the things I find interesting, whether they're articles or speeches or other things. So I hope that's a way of continuing the conversation because as well as supporting uh, Labour students, uh, one of the th reasons I'm doing this university tour is actually to build interest in politics and try and keep up a political conversation, which I think has a huge way to go to overcome some of the sterility that exists in the Westminster debate about politics and there's energy out in the country that sometimes doesn't find form in Westminster and I, I, I certainly found that today. Thanks very much for that. I'm sure you'll... Um... I'm sure everyone will agree that's been a hugely interesting and rewarding afternoon and obviously many thanks to David Miliband for coming along and for Keith Gildart's participation as well. A reminder, of course, for all of us that these big political and economic questions are very pressing, and as a, an academic community, both in the school and the university, we should continue to be engaged with them in a very, very serious way. We hope very much you've enjoyed our school's version of the Andrew Marsh Show and David Dimbleby's Any Questions, and uh, let's just thank David uh, Miliband again for coming along uh, this afternoon. So thanks very much for being here.